You did not just do that. How does that what happen? Is that? Like we Goodness. are screwing up everything. I'm already getting confused. Are We just stopped at a Love's truck stop that I can use my open rose card. Don't have the open rose card. You're missing out on a ton of savings. This particular Love's, we're going to save about 52 cents per gallon. You did not just do that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Phil. <laughs> ah, no wonder it wouldn't go in gear. I am panicking, thinking we are stuck at this gas station forever. Phil couldn't get it in drive. He didn't I, no, start I it. couldn't get it in gear. Well, in gear. Drive is gear. You yeah. couldn't get it in the D. Ooh, that sounded really bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go back to Phil. Hey, Sleep, Phil. Good gravy. Well, I, I guess the... that's the advantage of having the engine in the back. That, yeah, there's one good thing to, of having the, dang it, of having the diesel rig. The engine's in the back. I can't hear it, so I never know when it's running. It, I don't even feel a vibration. And I went to leave out of the gas station, and uh, it wouldn't go into gear because it wasn't started. Damn. Okay, we got to go. I'm sweating. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This, this trip is not starting out very oh well. Like, we goodness. are screwing up everything. You'd think we were freaking brand new at this. We've only maybe, been doing it six years. Maybe we should go back and watch. We might be a, a, a newbie. newbie. <laughs> Our video. Maybe. Because we're, we're doing it all wrong. Okay, we're in gear. Let's, all right, let's drive. I'm ready to go. You have two options. You have a rest stop in three miles, or you have Bucky's um, in about 25 miles. Bucky's. Because we haven't been to one yet recently, I guess we need to stop again. I would love a big old cold unsweet tea. Oh, that would be really nice. And so, I, and I think today I want to try the the, the, the cheesesteak burrito. Oh, uh, the burritos are pretty yeah. good. One thing you'll figure out quickly is every Bucky's you go through is a madhouse. Watch for cars, because they will squish you. There are people coming from everywhere, cars going in every direction to try and get parking. It's ridiculous. It's like they forget how to drive once they get in this parking lot. And sometimes getting the RV in and out is a little more difficult than what you think, because it's not technically set up for our big old RV and tow car, but we've managed to make it work most of the time. This is for the ladies' room, so I am going back to the RV because this is ridiculous. Wow, that was a total madhouse. It was actually worse than yesterday. Yeah, it's half the size of the world's largest convenience store, so it had twice as many people here. The line for the ladies' bathroom damn near wrapped around the store. It was insane. I'm already getting confused. RV Village says right there on the panel. Okay, we were, that's where we are. We're Antenna RV Village. So we stopped here to hang out with some friends, um, Ryan and Lauren, that we met actually through RV Unplugged the first season. They were contestants on Phil's team. And yeah. we, I don't hold that against them, of course. But we had a great time. We didn't record anything because we were just hanging out with them. And today we are getting back in and going further north and trying to get away from this heat. I don't think we're going to be successful for at least a week. Yeah. I mean, this is ridiculously hot. If it's in the 90s in Montana, you know, it's, it's going to be, we're going to be losing the battle. So again, I have found a campground for us to stay at. We are not overnighting in a parking lot anywhere because we'd have to run the generator all night long. So I found a little campground connected to a casino in Oklahoma and that's where we're headed. Temperatures in the RV are over 100. I just got a notification from our AC app, which is Easy Touch. I always forget what it's called. And it just said, sent an alert saying it is 102 degrees in the bedroom. So because we are, be, are pulling in in about an hour, it is time to turn that bad boy on. So hopefully by the time we get um, to our next stop, we it'll be a little more cooled off and it won't take till 8 p.m 
before we can deal with the temperature in the RV. So first up, Phil has to turn on the generator. Now turning on the AC is super easy. All I have to do is go to my cell phone, open up the app and hit the button. I used to have to get out of my seat, go over stand where Phil is and don't tell anyone I said this, but actually climb up on the edge of his chair while he's driving so I could turn it on because I couldn't actually reach it. Hopefully this will make a difference. We arrived at our destination and turning the ACs on ahead of time really helped. So the front is at 86. What's the back at? 93. 93 and that was 103 when she first started it. Good morning. We're getting ready to hit the road and as you can see this little stop has been perfect. It is literally right off the 35 which is right here but the good thing is, because it's tucked in behind the casino, behind the gas station, you don't really hear the highway noise. So it is full hookups for 30 bucks a night. So if you're traveling down the 35 and you need an overnight, this is a perfect place. Today we're going about four hours north into Nebraska and we're gonna chill there at a little city park for a couple days. The only thing is, there is a catch. It is a first come first serve park. So we are crossing our fingers that we get in. And if we don't, Phil has already asked if I have a backup plan. And of course the answer is no. <laughs> but we'll get one if we can't get a site. They have, I forget, 16 sites I think. I think they have eight with um, that are paved and eight that are not paved. And they all have water and electric. You always have to have a plan B. Always. Eh, there, were, there are plan Bs. I just don't know what it is yet. <laughs> Of I always have a plan B, C, and D. I just, you know, it's not on paper. That's not good. <laughs> That's never good. That never ends well. Did you say the name right? Where we were? I didn't say the name. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so you guys will learn that if I don't say where we are, if I put it on the screen or throw up a map, it's because I'm not sure I'm saying it right. We are on a Indian reservation. It is an Indian casino, so of course it is an Indian name and I do not want to hack it up, but go ahead, Phil. True story, bro. You can't. I, it's, is it Tonkawa? It's Tonkawa. Yeah, very good. I got it right. Hopefully that's right, but well, it asked, looks like Tonka, and then you add well, W-A. Yeah, I asked the lady when I went in and registered for Oh, so to see if we're saying it correctly. <laughs> Just to make sure. Cheater. He cheated. Have you been looking for a way to clean your RV that won't cause damage, but is still tough enough to tackle dirt and grime? Well, we have the perfect solution for you. Release All Purpose Cleaner and Degreaser, the sponsor of today's video. We've been using Release for about six months now, and once you try it, Release will be your go-to cleaning product on every surface inside and outside the RV. I've used it all over this RV, and it gets the job done. What we love most about this product is it's made in the USA, biodegradable, and non-toxic. It's even safe enough to use on ceramic coatings for those occasional stubborn bugs. Release cuts through the dirt and grime, including baked on bug guts on the front cap and carbon soot on the tires. You can pick up Release in their 32-ounce ready-to-use spray bottle, but the cheapest way to use Release is with their Ultra Concentrate. Each gallon of Release Ultra Concentrate will make 80 ready-to-use 32-ounce bottles at just over a buck a bottle. Use our coupon code and save 10% on your purchase. If you order now, they're offering free shipping for anything over 75 bucks to those in the lower 48, so don't wait. Woo, that Ooh, only took the 15 times. <laughs> Pick up Release today for all your house and RV cleaning needs. Don't forget your car, your boat, your golf cart, oh, your trucks, your ATVs. I could keep going. This stuff really works. We are going to stop along the way at a Walmart. We need some groceries so I can continue my quest to eat better and cook more at home. So there's one about 20 minutes down the road. We're going to make a little detour, fill up the fridge, and then continue on. Luckily, it is quite easy for us to park this RV in the Walmart parking lot. We did do the Google Earth, the Google Satellite, the Street View, all that to make sure that we could get in and get out yeah. there parking. So we always do that. That Walmart was not really a grocery store. It was mainly stuff with one end cap of fruits and vegetables. And luckily right next door was a real grocery store with real food. So we are all stocked up. We just need to put it all away.
we made it and guess what there are a ton of spots for us so it is not even close to being full it is a cute little city park i love it when we find these little gems we are going to be sitting right on the baseball field and it looks like the pool is over here for the city the rec center so it's going to be a nice hopefully quiet little spot by the way in case you're wondering this place is uh, electric water no sewer and it's 15 bucks a night you can't beat that we just realized that not all the sites have water i guess you're supposed to share it probably like they do in some of them but we're so we're gonna move so this one has water literally right beside the site so we are gonna come right here so that way we don't have to worry about water because we didn't fill our tanks because i saw online that it said um no sewer but water and 30 amps so just a little switch here all right, power's good to go. We are going to unhook the Jeep and pull it. All right, check I brought you out. a present. Oh, thanks. Look. How does that what happen? Is that? It's a screw. Just random screw. How do these just, like, fall out of stuff? It was on this side. The passenger slide so i don't know what it went to but um it is a significant size screw okay um wait how do we get these all the time all right try that again how do we get these all <laughs> the time they're just so random yeah um it could have come from the the guide the, it could have came from it could have come from the uh the dinette it could come from anything but that looks like a wood screw it does I Look, the curtains are moving. The I curtains know. are moving. Look at that. We this is. It feels great. After all my tears, I am here. This little city park was a great find. I really enjoyed chilling for the last three days, getting some work done. It is super quiet and it is a, a perfect stop. Yeah, especially since we were the only ones here for two of those days. We did have somebody come in yesterday, um, but there's plenty of room for people here. 16 sites, I think Stacy said. It's pretty nice. Yeah, and what I really liked is they have so much stuff here for families, the parks and recs. There's actually a paved trail coming from the campground I was able to use every day. And there was a surprising fact we discovered about this park specifically that you guys are gonna to wanna to hear about. Yeah, you know how Stacy loves history, so you're about to get hit with some history right. in your life. <laughs> this park actually started out with the CCC, and if you guys haven't heard of those, they are a civil construction corps that was enacted during the Great Depression to help with infrastructure across the U.S., and most importantly, to give jobs so people can have a paycheck and feed their families. There were nine barracks here, and very interestingly, six of those barracks became POW camps during World War II for Germans. That is crazy. Yeah, the German uh, prisoners were here to do work so that the, the local men that were here could leave or they left for the military. So the, the German war, POWs, yeah. uh, they pitched in where the men had left. So there was a lot of work for them to do here to keep yeah. them occupied. Mainly farm work. They yeah. were farmers. There's still a lot of farmers here today. But 120 uh, POWs, German POWs were here at one time. And a really cool thing you can do if you come here is you can tour one of the original buildings. They're only open two days a week. So we weren't able to actually <laughs> tour it. It's been... Um, taken over to some muse a museum, which is about 15 minutes from here. So if you want to tour that, that along with a one-room schoolhouse and a whole bunch of other things that they have over there, put that on your to-do list for when you pop into this city. Yeah, you gotta love small town living. If you're a fan of roadside attractions, we have a real treat for you. <laughs> this little town has a really sweet roadside attraction that a lot of people put on their bucket list and actually. I found it by mistake because I didn't realize it was in the city until we got here. It is the world's longest swing, according to the town, not Guinness. It's a little squeaky, but it's pretty cool. It is cool. It can hold 16 adults or 24 children. And according to the um, sign over there, it also says that 
they are declaring it the world's long, longest or largest, even though nobody else agrees with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we don't know the actual length of it because it doesn't say. Can you nap? Oh, I can nap anywhere. So, uh, 30 feet-ish, maybe? Ish. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's not to scale. It actually swings, so you'll have to excuse the squeak. So if you're coming through this area, this is a really cool thing to come and just check out. This small town is really, I think it's a really sweet town. It's very family oriented. There are a lot of things here for the family to do together, the kids to do. And I really love seeing the kids riding their bicycles to the pool. That just makes me feel like this is a really great family community. Well, it takes you back to when we were kids, because yeah. that's what we did. We would yeah. ride our bikes everywhere, and you'd see bikes just laying all over town. All over the neighborhood, uh, the neighborhood. street. Yeah, that's, that's what this feels like. It feels like, you know, where you were growing up. Um, Small town, and that's what I love about the way we travel. I would never come through this town if we were traveling in the and car. vacationing two weeks a year. Woo. Get that? on it. If we were vacationing two weeks out of the year, we would haul it to our destination and then go back home and go back to work. This lets us meander, <laughs> sorry about that. This lets us meander through, make these little discoveries, see real, real hometown America and see the real people and the real communities that make our country great. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of how I could have said that any better and you nailed it. There I mean, it is, it is small town living at its finest, that's for sure.